Okay, Sam. So today we're going to learn a little bit of jazz trumpet extended techniques. So basically, in a lot of jazz playing and a lot of uh, solo playing, uh, jazz uses a lot of weird things on the trumpet that you don't normally use in like band or an orchestra. And so we're going to learn a couple of them. And uh, so that hopefully you can use them when you're laying down your next awesome solo in jazz band. <laughs> uh, so which happens all the time. Oh yeah. So we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna start with some growls. Um, so I'll demonstrate it a little bit and then uh, kind of tell you a little bit how to do it and then we'll just go back and forth and refine it a bit. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Okay, so uh, the first one is a growl where you use your tongue, kind of like, it's like a flutter tongue. So it's like, brrr, like rolling your R's. Try that for me. Basically, just rolling your R's while playing. Yeah, cool. And so that one, you use it like really high volumes, and you really want it to be super aggressive. Uh, another one is so if you can't roll your tongue or if you want a little bit of a different sound, you kind of use like the back of your throat. It's kind of like a phlegmy sound. Try that. Yeah, it's kind of, you have to kind of move it around a little bit. doesn't affect the tone quality as much, and you can use that kind of more as a stylistic thing rather than an aggressive thing like the flutter tongue. Um, and then the third kind is a vocal growl where you kind of, you like hum or sing while you're playing. Um, and that gives it, it's a very unique sound. Like that, and just any pitch. And so you can keep singing the same pitch and then play whatever you want on trumpet. That makes it easier. Um. Like that. And if you really want to get fancy, you can do multiphonics, but that's like... Tuba players do that, um, like a sousaphone player, and brass bands will do that. Um, so those are growls, um, and you can see they're a little funky to work with, but you can work them out too. Uh, lip trills is the second thing on the list. Uh, well, when we got a couple different types of trills and shakes, so actually, I want to start with finger trills, because that's obviously the easiest. Um, and that you can get really aggressive with, especially if you have a section of just like one of the horn sections. Um, all finger trilling at the same time can be really, really nasty, which is good if you want it to be. So like... And just be really aggressive with it. Not so, it's not as clean as a orchestral trill. Okay. Yeah, yeah. soloing just like that um, the next kind is a uh, lip trill which basically does the same thing as a finger trill but you don't use a finger uh, and it's easier if we start at a little bit in the higher register because the intervals are closer together so let's try like uh, G to B flat Actually, let's try uh, E flat. That's a little easier. Yeah, 
And so um, for that, you want to get, you want to find the buzz point that's right in the middle of those two slots, one for the F sharp and one for the E flat. Find like a little bit above E natural and just hang out there and then all you have to do is move your, adjust your tightness a tiny bit in either direction and it'll flip into each one. And you can get it as fast as you want. Just like that. And so that, uh, a lot of Louis Armstrong stuff uses that. solos and you'll notice a lot of uh, like older time like ragtime feel drum players will do that um, a little bit in bebop but mostly in like old stuff and that so that's a fun one to do and especially if you're like up in the really high register uh, it can really add a nice pop to what you're trying to do um, and the last one which I think is the most fun one is shakes it's a little bit like a trill but and it's a little bit like a lip trill, but it's super, super nasty. And you just, especially like in lead trumpet playing, or if you're playing like a Thad Jones tune, or a crazy, really back of the beat, uh, Count Basie song, like yeah, the drum will be drumming away, and then the trumpet section is just back there, just going crazy on the trills. It's definitely my favorite, and it's I think it's the most fun to play too. So. It's a little bit, it's a lot like a lip trill, but you do it farther and nastier. So, I think one of the most fun ones to do is a D in the staff, but with one and two, three fingerings. So, and so it's a little bit of a combination. You use a little bit of the technique that you use for a lip trill, but instead of just lip trilling, you grab the horn and you move it back and forth a little bit. You put a little bit of motion in the horn. So you let your left hand kind of relax. Yeah. And then with the right hand, just give it a little bit of back and forth. And give it give it some good volume too. Give it a shot. Yeah, yeah, well, and you saw when you got a little bit louder, when you put more air into it, it worked a little better. You gotta leave your chops pretty loose. <laughs> yeah, 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 there you go. Uh, and so you'll hear a lot of that, as, even in, in wind band, when you do like, uh, <laughs> for the, you know, the end of Sleigh Ride. Yeah, Sleigh Ride, yeah. yeah it's the horse sound, the windy sound. Uh, in jazz, more so, like if you're using uh, like a, a plunger mute and doing a plunger solo and, you know, just like, I don't know, it adds a lot of style. Um, another way to do it is if you're playing like like lead playing. You know, something like that. Give it a try. Just play whatever you want in the lead register and give it, just give it a little bit of, of uh, motion along with the lip trill and it just makes it a little dirtier. Um, yeah. So that's a fun one and it's very effective, especially if you can get a whole section to do it in a very tight way um, that it, it's just like it'll smack the audience right in the face <laughs> uh, and it's very it's it's a crowd pleaser too. Um, the next extended technique is half valves doing a half valve technique um, and this is used both in when you're soloing or in section parts um, so and especially like if you're doing just chromatic things where it's just a half step apart. Um, it gives it, it lets you bend things a little more than yeah. you could just without it. So try it, just play like, play a scale and every other note. Halfway down and blow through it. Yeah, yeah. there you go. You got the, the flats open there. Nice. Try doing 
that. Try going an octave. Yeah. And so you'll hear that same kind of effect uh, in the clarinet and rhapsody in blue. You know, that kind of stuff, all very applicable. Um, it's in jungle. Yeah, oh, in Jungle Book too, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's all over the place, and it's. It gives it a very different color um, of the trumpet. That it's. It's especially if you're not ready for it, and you're a listener in the audience, yeah. it jumps out at you like, "Whoa, that was a cool sound!" Um, and you did pretty good. That was pretty nice. Um, and then the last thing, which I mean, you can use pretty much any time. It's it's mostly a stylistic thing. It's tongue stops. Where you just, you're playing a note and then you shove your tongue all the way up into the front of your mouth, into the mouthpiece, and cut the note off. Try. Yeah. Well, and it's characterized by uh, leading through it. So, what makes a tongue stop really effective is that you're playing a, like a loud phrase or you're playing a note that has emphasis moving forward. And then you cut it off at the tongue, and it's just like, oh, leaves you hanging there a little bit. So like, you kind of you push to the end through the tongue. Yeah, try to do it, giving it a crescendo just on the C. Yeah, and try and hit it up in the front as much as you can. Yeah, if you have the Try with just air. Yeah. 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 And it allows for very, very crisp, uh, crisp cutoffs, especially in, in Latin music, or if you're doing a bossa, or if you're doing a really fast, uh, like a burner tune. Uh, if you have a whole a whole trumpet section, decide to do a, a tongue stop release. It's, again, to the audience, it's like, uh, really effective. So let's just run through them real quick, and then I think we'll be done. Uh, and I'll just, we can trade off. We'll go down the list. So we'll start, we'll start with growls. First one is tongue. And second one is throat, or like a flabby one, whatever you want to use. techniques that you can use when you're soloing or when you're in the section or if you're trying to decide what you want a section to play uh, you can use all those in your jazz program thank, thank you sir. you Ben boom <laughs>